Hi, this screencast is about understanding a web form submission. My name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. So what is a submission? A submission is data entered into a form. How is a submission stored in Drupal? Well, web form submissions are content entities, but form elements, which are being used to populate a submission, do not use field API. So this is the web form submission table. It's, people are very familiar with this. It's storing you know, submission ID, the web form it's associated with, the UUID, the language completed, all the metadata around a web form. And we'll, we'll get into it a little bit more in a bit. But And this is the data table. And it's a very flat, simple table. It's only got six, six columns. And it's using something called an entity attribute value model. And basically, an entity meaning a web form submission, an attribute meaning the name of the element and the value is the data that someone entered. If it's multiple values, you'd have a delta for each value. Um, I'm not going to read this whole description, but basically the entity, entity attribute value model just allows you to store a lot of arbitrary data in a table, and it's very lightweight and quick. Now, why, why use the entity attribute value model? It, it's a simple way to store a lot of data. That, that's, you know, field API is great for storing really complex data and building large sites and entity attribute value models. So you're just storing the data really quickly. It's like an object store. And this is a big nuance I want to come back to is what is a source entity? Well, source entity tracks and creates a relationship to the Drupal entity a web form was submitted from. So if you're on a web form node and the node ID is one, two, three, we're going to track that this submission came from node 123. So in the web form submission table, we store the entity type and the entity ID to keep track of this relationship. And the source entity can be used to track site feedback. So if you added a feedback form to every page on your site, you would be able to know which page that feedback form was submitted from. Or event registration, you might have a registration form and you attach it to all your event nodes. And what happens is each one of those nodes with the event registration, it kind of becomes its own form tracking system, it just tracks events, tracks registrations for that specific event. And a similar thing with an application evaluation system, you could actually, the way that works is someone fills out an application, it comes in, and then you can at, attach an evaluation to that application and have multiple people, you know, evaluate that application. And that's also a source entity. So I'm going to do a demo. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. We're on a contact form, so I'm going to quickly walk through, and it's going to hint at other ways you know you can use web forms. There's a references tab to add web form nodes. I'm going to add a contact form very quickly. It already fills out the default. So by the way, you can look at the video about web form nodes to understand more about this, but I've created a web form node. I'm on the web form node. I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to create a test submission on the web form node. Created one. Actually, I'm going to click back. So we're on the web form node, node five. I'm going to click back and I'm going to get back to the main web form. And you're going to see that record comes in and it says contact. Now, if I create a test submission here, this is not a web form node. This is just the web form on the page on the site. So there's no source entity. It would be itself. That would be the source entity. But now if I go in and click results, you're going to see I get next record. But there's no submitted to because we're not tracking that. Um, but now we have the contact. Now to even take this a step further, and this is really starting to hint at a lot of the functionality here and the capabilities. If I go into sidebar second, I add a web form, and I add the contact form. Now I've placed this block throughout my entire site. And I have some dummy demo content. I don't even need to show you much more on that. But if I go back to site, so I don't want to do it from here because this is the form we just created. But let's say we go to the home page and we have, well, we have a demo event. So I click through and I fill out this form here. Test, test, hit send. And I'm going to use these quick links to quickly get to the results it's now tracking the node that it was submitted on and it will track every single node that this has been submitted on 
And in, in a lot of ways, we've just created a site feedback form because we know what page they're on when they're giving the feedback. It's a pretty solid demo of how the source entities work. They're really useful and powerful. Um, it makes it possible to kind of reuse your form across multiple feeds. You don't have to keep creating the same form. If As long as you get the use case right, you can take the same registration form and use it on multiple events. I keep going. There's not much more to talk about. Well, we can talk about how to manage a submission. You know, you can view, edit, add notes to it, and you can resend it, and you can also look at the logs that are going on with the submission. Um, it's not much to demo with that. So, you know, we can talk about how our submissions displayed, and, you know, the data, you know, you can alter this, but the data is, to, you know, can be displayed as HTML or text, formatted using very simple render arrays. Most elements don't have templates if you're a themer. Some elements do, like uh, composites tend to have templates because they're a little more complex, and you can override the output of every element using inline twig. Um, the demo there for that, we're looking at this. So let's look at the, the submission that came in. And we can see, you know, here's your preview. You get a table view that shows you everything. It's a little cleaner for very long, long, long forms. You can look at it as plain text, which gives you a hint how to look at it in plain text email. You can look at the raw data. You can edit it. You can go into notes and just adjust these notes. These are also available from the main results tab. Resend is very powerful because it gives you a preview of the emails before they go out. So this is, by the way, this was the dummy data I put in. So, you, you know, you can customize that. You can get each email and resend them. You can delete it. And the logging, it's just a tracking. It just, it, it's a permanent record of everything that's happened in your web form submission. When it was submitted, when the emails are sent out, if you have a scheduled email, it tracks that. Now, to talk about altering it, I'm going to jump back up to the form. So the values are very simple. If I go in here and we go into the build tab, I hit edit. Well, let's use email as a better example. Email. And we go into advanced, the collapses, get up to submission display. Default that displays as a link kind of makes sense. It's an email linked to the email address. You can display the raw value, or if you go into custom, you can go in and put in twig for both the HTML and text. And this gives you a little helper where you can say, you know, here's the value. And you know what? I'm just going to say, hey, don't, you can even do this. Don't email this person. Do not send email to this person, this account, any account. Do not send any emails. Nah, it doesn't really matter, any emails. We could add it to both. You have to do HTML text because emails can go out as HTML and text and it's easier, you know, it makes it more flexible. Also, when you're, most of the time your emails will be HTML, but text is used when you're exporting the data. And this just keeps track of that. I hit save. And if I go in to the results tab, I think it's actually going to kick in here. You see how that's the text format? If I kick in here, this will be the HTML format. We're messing with an email address. It's not that interesting. But for more complex elements, you can do a lot of custom styles. You can alter the address. You can wrap, you know, do whatever you want. Just gives you that level of flexibility. Keeping in mind, it's not using field API, so we don't have all of Drupal's fancy field formatters available. They're very basic. For example, if you're doing an uploaded image, you can display the image. You can display thumbnails. You can display a modal dialog, and that's it. You don't get into any other advanced functionality because the goal is to collect data. It's not really to build web pages or display it. Um, I'm going to keep going and just kind of throw out some exercises or things you should think about. Um, you can add administrative elements to a submission, see how that works when you're previewing it. Um, you can alter the display format of submission value. You should definitely look at that and just you know check check it out. Um, Resetting email notifications, definitely do that a few times just to know it works. And yep, play with the twig. And, you know, with the, the source entity, definitely do some tests with that. Create a feedback form and attach it to every page of the block and go through and click through and see how that works. And then do a web form node and see how that works. Um, that's it for now. Have fun playing with the web form module.